Hi, my name is Todd Mullins and I'm the nursery manager at Rich Farms Nursery. And I'm here today to uh, show you how to assemble some spring planters. All right, today we're going to assemble a patio planter. Um, we, you can put a patio planter in almost any container as long as it has drainage holes in the bottom and uh, will withstand the weather conditions. Uh, we like these pots at Rich Farms. This is a 16 inch tulip banded pot. It's made of plastic, it's durable, lasts a number of years outside, uh, not very expensive. You can pick one of these up for $10 or less, and they make great containers to make mixed patio planters. So what we're gonna do with this one, this has a silver wash to it, so we're going to use cool colors in this, and uh, I'll show you how to assemble a, a nice mixed patio planter. We're gonna be sure that our container has drainage holes in the bottom, you want your water to be able to drain out, otherwise it'll fill up with water and the plants will not do well. So we're going to start off by filling the base of the container with some potting soil. Got it up to maybe five inches below the rim. We'll bring that over here. You want to start with an upright, kind of an anchor plant for your container. In this case we're using a rush. This is an Acorus. Uh, it's Blue Arrows Rush. Uh, the nice thing about it is that it'll get to be about maybe 30 inches tall and uh, tolerates sun or a little shade, likes moisture, so it should do really well in this container. Now you can either put these in the back and build in front or you can center them and build around. In this case we're going to center and build around. I've used, chosen to use two of these uh, the Blanket Midnight Velvet Double Petunias. These will be really nice. They'll spread. They'll be covered with flowers all season long. And what we're going to do is put uh, one of these in on each side of your center plant, your rush. Nice roots. Nice development here. We'll put that on this side so they'll be balanced on either side of the planter. Uh, we'll also add some filler plants. These will give you a little more texture and a little more interesting color. Uh, this is a Bacopa. This one's called Betty Pink. This will trail and spill down over the front edge along with your petunias and give a nice variation in flower size and color. Then the last item we're going to add here is called Diamond Frost. This is a Euphorbia but it's a very nice tough filler plant and the last thing we'll do is bring it back to the potting bench and add a little more soil. And with a good watering in, this plant is, uh, this planter is pretty much ready to set out on your patio as long as it's going to be above freezing. Uh, this particular planter, the plants would appreciate full sun, so it would do better in a full sun situation. By full sun, we mean at least five or six hours a day of sunshine. So half a day of sun would still be good. Let's do a floor planter with something a little different, and this one will be something you can eat off of. Uh, we're going to manufacture one with a tomato in the middle. This is a Mountain Fresh. And we'll put some Italian basil around the outside. And for a little splash of color and something you can still eat, uh, we have some golden oregano. We use a, a good quality professional soilless soil mix. Uh, this one is made by the Berger Company out of uh, Quebec. It's uh, their number one mix, but you can use any good premium potting soil. Uh, we'll start with our anchor plant, and in this case, it's our Mountain Fresh Tomato. Uh, this will, in the container, get to be maybe five feet tall eventually, and loaded with lots of beautiful red tomatoes. Now tomatoes do something called stem rooting, meaning that if you bury them a little deeply, they'll root along that stem and that'll give them even more roots to work with. So we're going to plant this just a little bit deep. Now for the front of your little edible combination here, we're going to go ahead and use the golden oregano, put it right in front. And then we're going to put a couple of uh, Italian sweet basils on the back side. And, uh, this would be real nice when it's time to make pasta. All right, again, we're going to bring up the level of the soil to about a half an inch or so below the rim. And that little bit of head space will give us a little reservoir to put when you water it. It'll keep your water from rolling over the sides. 
and also when we put a little fertilizer on here later that'll keep the fertilizer in the pot we're going to want to stake it or provide some support for it i have a three foot long bamboo just a green painted bamboo stake we'll use that as our support for the tomato run it down right next to the tomato itself put it all the way to the bottom of the pot and we can use a little bit of floral tape or uh, some sort of a tying material you can use old pantyhose uh, I wouldn't use wire or something that will constrict the plant later on because that's going to maybe cause damage to it as it tries to grow. But uh, floral tape works well and, and any other soft items that will still provide some support. And then as the tomato grows, you can continue to tie it all the way up to the top. Okay, for our last planter, we're going to use a reddish color wash on that tulip banded pot. Again, I really like this 16 inch tulip banded. It's a good utilitarian pot, but it still looks nice. Uh, has kind of a metallic look to it. All it is is a, a paint wash on a black pot. Uh, not very expensive, uh, good to use. For our anchor plant on this one, because we've got such a nice copper reddish patina on the pot, we're going to stick with that theme and we're going to use some warm colors. Now your warms are your reds, your yellows, your oranges. Uh, they also mix well with other yellow foliage and they mix well with white flowers. Uh, but in this case what we're going to start with is a red star spike. This is the uh, one of the later variations of the standard Dracaena, Dracaena spike that's been used for years. Uh, this makes a great anchor for a combination planter. Uh, it will still be visible over top of your flowers underneath. Uh, loves full sun, tolerates dry conditions. It, it's just a good plant, good anchor plant. Okay, we're going to use, for our main flower color, we're going to use these sun patients. Now, sun patients are like New Guinean patients, but not in that uh, they tolerate and actually thrive in full sun. So these are great to use in flower beds or in planters or in hanging baskets. And uh, they're very easy to care for. They do like a lot of water once they're established. So you need to provide some water in the middle of summer for them. Uh, they grow very quickly. So they can cover an area in a fairly short period of time. Uh, this particular one, this one is uh, spreading Corona sun patients. We're gonna use two of these in this planter and we'll put them opposite each other. Okay, that gives us room for some other uh, additional items. And uh, one that I've chosen, this is a sweet potato. It's an ornamental sweet potato, but it also does produce potato tubers. So at the end of the year, you'll have some tubers in here undoubtedly. Uh, but the sweet potato is uh, by Green Fuse. It's called Sweet Georgia Heart Purple. Has the nice heart-shaped leaf. And we think that the purple color complements the pot very well. So we like to use this right in front. We'll turn it around, go to the other side. And uh, we really like this uh, golden oregano. It's a nice color. It's also an edible herb. But even if you just use it for color, it makes a great filler plant. So we grow it for that purpose. So basically I'm just filling in the voids, getting the level up to where I want it, and shaking it a bit and that'll settle everything in around the roots. One of the last steps is to provide nutrition for our plants. Uh, plants like people need to eat in order to thrive and this provides the nutrients that they need. One of the products I really like, this is called Osmocote. Uh, this has a balanced blend of nutrients. Uh, it's, the blend of nutrients is encapsulated in a plastic disc like a BB and uh, that plastic coating allows the nutrients to be released over a long period of time. So you really only need to do this once or perhaps twice a season, and that would be it. All right, well, the last thing that we're going to do with our combination planters and our hanging basket is we're gonna water them in. Uh, this tends to settle the soil in around the roots and gets everything off to a good start. And uh, if your soil was a little bit dry when you assembled, then this gets that good and moist.
I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch as we assembled some planters. Uh, again, very easy to do. Anybody can do this. Uh, we have most of the materials here at Ridge Farms. Uh, we're open seven days a week, and I uh, would be happy to see you come out. So uh, again, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Have a good day.